I took one glass blowing class and I remember feeling like I was getting it and then one day I blew by myself and I, gra- I remember grabbing the light, long end and burning my hand. <laughs> that was my last time I worked with glass. Often I think about site and location and history and what is history, how does that impact reflect on the present day or what are its implications from the past. So for me, I think partly because I did not don't have a glass background and the museum was already filled with so many beautiful things I thought well I don't know I don't know how to address maybe aesthetics in that way that could be new or fresh it feels as though it had already been tackled so I thought well maybe if I think about the history or the location or the siting of like why the glass industry was developed there and I was interested in in shell pile Uh, which records are indicating that it was the home for the black oyster factory workers. And then I found out, not unsurprisingly, that the conditions they were living in were pretty grim. They lived in wooden shacks, basically shanty towns, um, at the height and the decline of the the oyster boom. So I guess my hope was really to create a memorial to these workers. So I thought if I filled that central display case with shells up to kind of like almost like a horizon line, a line where if you're standing in front of it as an adult, you would kind of reach at the eye level, you would think about the the ocean, the sea, kind of like where these things came from, but also all of those shells below would maybe make you think about the body, the the physicality that space is taking up. It's kind of like the equivalent to a body scale. So maybe you'll think about that kind of loss as well. I also thought of like, if I'm making this piece that's a sculpture, it's really an installation. So what kind of feeling do I want the room to have? So that's when I started thinking about, like, maybe the wall color. How can I use the wall color that when someone enters the room, they already feel a shift from the gallery prior and the gallery after. They kind of recognize they're entering some sort of space that feels different, so that black peppercorn color, that darkness kind of allows you to think of kind of, maybe, maybe you don't imagine think there's something melancholy or there's something about reverence or something to be revered or something else to consider just because of that that color. So then I thought that would be a way of kind of considering this memorial kind of holistically in terms of the entirety of the space. Any project that I do, that I think I start off with research, one, because of even if you, I have knowns or the things that I understand or, or assume, I know they can be confounded. So for me, researching, finding about out about the history of that area to me was, you know, kind of mind-blowing. I had no idea. So for me, kind of learning about a part of the part of a region that's not far from where I live was pretty exciting and kind of insightful. And for me, that's what's exciting. Offered an opportunity to kind of discover and have my curiosity be met and fulfilled. The glass door. I was. I, I kept thinking about. I mean, I love the doors in that in that building, and there's so many of them. I, I mean, I love the molding, and I kept thinking, okay, I should do something with doors. And I thought, okay, a door has many functions. You know, it's 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 a barrier, it's a la- it's a space, it's a threshold, it's an indicator, of probably a private space, it's a means of entry. It does make you think about what is behind the door, what is it, what do we have access to, and what we don't. But this was maybe one of the first times where. It was strange that my hand, I didn't have the skill, and my hand didn't touch at all the material. Um, and it was, on some level, it wasn't necessarily a leap of faith because, I mean, these are the most skilled, amazing <laughs> people mm-hmm. you can find in the world, in the country, who work in this material. But it was a strange thing of trying to communicate your idea and have it be understood and have to work through the hands of many others. Also, the material that's so seductive, so I was kind of intimidated by a material that is so seductive, so um, kind of universally, universally loved. And I was thinking, how do I kind of resist maybe the inherent beauty of the material? How can I kind of do something that you could think more pra- practically or more, more pragmatically about how it functions? In the day-to-day, so what does it mean to have this glass that's normally transparent, but now it's obfuscating? So I was interested in kind of, you can't deny, I mean, it's still a beautiful glass door that I hope stays there forever. But how could I have it be, make sure that it kind of extends from there? And that was just trusting that 
folks knowing that was my interest, they had the the, the artist had it realized. It was realized by them in the most mm-hmm. amazing way. And I just am so feel enlivened that I had the opportunity to kind of just discover and work with and you know be part of that exhibition.